Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to make Egyptian pastrami. It's very, very easy, but does take some time. So let's go see the steps and ingredients together. The ingredients that I have for the pastrami, I have two kilograms of beef. This kind of beef is called the round eye beef roast. Uh, you could use less. You can make one kilogram at a time, up to you. Um, I'm just going to use two kilograms. So I've washed it very, very well, and I've removed all the fat, so it's completely red. And we have here half a cup of paprika. This is uh, not spicy, just regular paprika. And for every kilogram, we're using a quarter of a cup of paprika. So I'm using two kilos. I'll be using half a cup of paprika. Then I have black pepper that I will grind soon. And I have nutmeg. And I have as well uh, nut the nutmeg mixed with bay leaf. I have two tablespoons of salt. And I have two big heads of garlic. And I have here two fenogreek seeds. And I have uh, salt. This th These are two different, so it's the same table salt, but I'm just using them at different steps. So I've separated them. So the first thing we're going to do is completely dry the piece of meat. There can't be any meat, any um, water at all, so as dry as you can possibly get it. And I'm going to get a sharp knife and I'm going to start poking holes all around, evenly distributed. We're going to stuff these uh, uh, holes with salt. So first I'm going to go all around and make sure everywhere there's a hole. So again, this is uh, round eye beef roast. So now I'm going to start filling all the holes that I've made with the salt that I had. So all around and spread it on the uh, top as well. So stuff the holes and stuff uh, surround it like this. Rub it around. Like that. So now I have ready here a large piece of gauze that I'm going to wrap my uh, round eye beef with. Okay, so we've all wrapped it there perfectly. And I'm going to find an, a big tray that's the same size as my, my uh, eye beef roast. Then I'm going to put a net on top of it. And I'm going to put the meat on top of that. So it has to be the same size because I'm going to be draining all the water through underneath the net and into the pan. And here I have bricks because I need to put pressure on the meat. But I've wrapped them in foil and I will not let the foil touch the meat because it's very dangerous. So I'm going to put another pan that's completely dry on top of my meat. And I'm going to put my weights on there. You can use whatever you want for weights. I just used some bricks that I had and I've wrapped them very well. Like that. So I've uh, placed them against the wall just so they don't tip or fall. And I'm going to leave it for one full day, 24 hours. It has to be 24 hours so it's well drained. After 24 hours, we're going to see the mixture of seasonings that we're going to use on it. So now it's been 24 hours, and now I'm going to start unwrapping it. You're going to notice that it's, it has hardened a little bit because it's more drained from water, which is good. So after that, I'm going to remove the gauze, and I'm going to wash it lightly from the salt. Make sure you're, you're washing it very quickly. We don't want it to soak up any water. So just first wipe down as much salt as you can, and then run some water through it, and then dry it completely again. So here it's dried, it's fully dried, and I'm going to get a blow dryer, but I'm going to use the cool air on there and uh, blow it up, blow the meat like that, just to speed up the drying process so it goes faster. And then we're going to find that top thin piece that I have there, and I'm going to poke a hole through it like this so that I can put some string into it because we're going to be hanging our piece of meat. So it's going to look like this. And we're going to try to hang it up somewhere in the kitchen. We're going to cover it with gauze so that no bugs or microbes get on it. 
and it's a new piece of gauze. So we're going to tie it first, and then we're going to put on top of it the gauze. And then I've hung it here on my cabinet. You can hang it up anywhere, uh, somewhere far away from a lot of movement, but an aired area, so not too trapped. So we're going to leave it like that for another day, so 24 hours, and then we're going to remove the gauze and season it. So as we can see, it's been 24 hours, one full day, and it's fully dry and hardened some more. So now I'm going to remove the gauze and start placing the seasoning on it. And don't get rid of the string. We're going to leave the string because we will be hanging it again. So this is here that I have the Fino Greek seeds and I've grinded them. I want them nice and soft. I've also grinded my garlic heads and I've added some water while I was blending it so it's more like a dough, a nice thick dough. It's going to help me with the blending of the seasoning. And then I'm going to put the nutmeg, the salt, the black peppers, and the bay leaf. That's the salt. I'm going to mix them very, very well first, and then I'm going to put the garlic. And if you feel that it needs more water because we need it as a dough, you can add some water. So again, it's very important that it's like a dough. As you can see here, it's a little bit dry, so I'm going to add more water so it's more soft and like a dough. Like that, and make sure everything is very, very well mixed. And as you can see here, it feels like a nice dough that I can spread. So I don't know how much exactly water I put, but I just kept putting to s until I it was the texture that I wanted it, so like that. Now we're going to start spreading the uh, seasoning that we have onto our piece of meat, like that. So try as much as you can to make to make sure that the amount that you've made fits the entire piece. Everything has to be covered with no holes. I've kept my my hands uh, wet with water so that it doesn't stick to me. So it sticks just to the meat and not to my hands. I've also put some water in the bottom of my plate so when I flip it over, the layer doesn't fall into the plate and stick to it. So we're just going to make sure that everything is covered. There's no holes has to all be covered to make sure it gets seasoned. And try to soften it so it's one piece. We don't want any cracks so that it does when it's drying it doesn't crack and fall off. So make sure that everything is smooth. And again I had some water at the bottom so it doesn't stick. So it looks like that. So again everything is covered, no holes at all, smooth with no cracks. So now we're going to hang it up. Uh, you can hang it up in the kitchen, but it does make a very strong smell. So you can put it with maybe in the balcony, a closed balcony or the basement. Um, so for this piece, it's going to take 10 days because this is 2 kilos, uh, just so it it's well cooked. After, if you are going to use, maybe if you use 1 kilo or so, maybe eight to, 7 to 8 days should be good. Uh, but I'm going to be doing it for 10 days because it's minus two kilos. So again, we're putting it in a closed area with not a lot of movement because it needs to stay still. So you can put it in the kitchen if no one is around it, or you can put it in a closed balcony or a basement. So as you can see, it's been 10 days, and the covering that I had on it is very hard. It has hardened, and it's stuck to the meats. I noticed on the first few days, the first two days, it started cracking, so I had ready a mixture that I had in my fridge of the same um, seasoning that I had made at first, but I kept some aside so in case it does crack. So when I saw the cracks, I basically just filled it again. So replaced it over and softened it. I didn't use any water this time. I put some in my hand like this, and I added some oil, and I spread it on top of the, the cracks that I saw. 
Okay, so just to make sure that it, there was uh, seasoning everywhere. So for the first two or three days, keep an eye out on any cracks that do show up, like that. But after that, don't touch it, just leave it as it is. It won't crack very much, but it shouldn't crack at all. But just don't come near it, don't move it, just leave it still. So I could divide this up into about five to six pieces so that I could store it individually. Every piece that I'm going to cut, I'm going to put in a Ziploc bag and in the freezer. And when I'm ready to use a piece, I just cut it up and put it in the fridge so it's accessible. So there we go. We're going to cut it into five to six pieces, however many is good. So now, as you can see, it looks very cooked. And the color, you can tell from the color that it's cooked. And when I'm going to, ref uh, to freeze them, I'm going to leave it with the coating that we have made because it reserves the fl preserves the flavor. So that's how we're going to store in the freezer. And I hope you can try it and enjoy it. Thank you. Bye.